Okay, so uh, let's continue our discussion of a gesture life and this time look at chapter 13. Uh, so in this chapter, we're um, back in the present, the framing uh, story of the narrative where Hada uh, has developed, reunited with his daughter. He's now um, sort of grow his relationship with his grandson is growing. So Thomas uh, is now sort of spending time with him and visiting him. Uh, and they're sort of growing closer together. Um, but we also get uh, a little bit more insight into uh, his relationship with Sunny and why they became uh, estranged uh, while she was still uh, a young uh, girl, still in her adolescent years. Uh, she became estranged uh, from her father. So in this chapter we learn a little bit more about uh, why they uh, did not sort of uh, get along uh, at that point in her life. Uh, okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. And there's some indications that had a, you know, he, his, his guilt uh, surfaces because of something traumatic that had happened to him in uh, his military service. But we also, uh, in this chapter, establish that his guilt is in part due to uh, his failed relationship with his daughter, Sonny. Uh, so he has guilt uh, for two reasons. And uh, both are kind of interconnected to um, the role he played in uh, another uh, woman's uh, life. Um, in this case, it's his daughter's, but uh, in his military service, it's his uh, re relationship with Kute. Uh, he seems to be sort of repeating patterns um, and relationship patterns, uh, first with Kute and then with his daughter, Sunny. Uh, so in that regard, we do have a sense that he is um, not over the past. The past keeps sort of influencing and haunting him. Uh, he keeps repeating it over and over again, uh, sort of these patterns of behavior uh, related to his sort of masculine identity and his role as kind of a father or a husband figure, somebody with authority over uh, the lives of uh, the women in his life. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, these uh, plot points in uh, Chapter 13. So we find out uh, in Chapter 13 that um, part of the reason why uh, she became sort of estranged uh, from her father uh, was due to whatever happened surrounding her first uh, pregnancy. So at the age of 17... Uh, we gain the uh, knowledge that she had become pregnant. This is on the bottom of page 283. Uh, so they're just thinking about, um, or he's thinking about, you know, what happened to her when she was 17. And uh, he acknowledges that uh, he had uh, convinced her uh, that uh, this pregnancy would should be terminated. So he convinces his daughter when she was 17 that uh, she shouldn't go through with the pregnancy. And then he says, uh, I forced her to do it. Um, so I'll just read a, a bit of that uh, paragraph to you. So this is bottom of 283. Um, uh, I nod even though I'm unsure whether I did or not, whether I even understood at all how deeply that time might have affected her. I was so thoroughly organized in my convincing her, though none of it would have worked had she not been plain scared inside, a frightened girl of 17, no matter how sure of herself she was or believed she was, that I couldn't stop until it was complete. I forced her to do it. Had she decided not to, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, so he is uh, talking or thinking back about uh, that time when he um, he forced uh, Sonny to to do it, which is to go through uh, with an abortion uh, when she became um, pregnant at the age of 17. Um, so that was her first pregnancy. Uh, and then we know they, they became estranged after that moment. And then she gave birth to her son, Thomas. And uh, that's... Uh, the relationship that Hada is uh, now starting with her or his grandson. So it's interesting uh, to me that Hada 
uh, is, you know, the one to take the lead and to express uh, his sort of desire and force his daughter to have an abortion. Uh, so this is just another kind of enactment of the way that he he takes control or authority over um, a woman's life. Uh, so as a sort of patriarchal figure, he um, asserts his dominance, his authority over Sunny uh, when she is afraid and scared and desperate and um, pregnant and doesn't know what to do. And we saw this already when Hada is reflecting back on his uh, decisions and his uh, sort of control over uh, Kute's life. So we've already seen in the past how he sort of uh, felt sort of possessive and in control of her, her fate or her life as well. And uh, it seems as if he has this sort of repeating pattern of um, wanting to control uh, the lives of uh, women in his life. So whether it's his daughter or uh, the woman he's in love with, uh, he wants to some sort of uh, be in control of their life and particularly their sort of sexuality. Um, and in this case, he forces his uh, daughter to um, go through it with an abortion. Um, so we see uh, him asserting his kind of patriarchal father figure dominance in this situation. So uh, Hada indicates that he actually felt uh, guilt following uh, this moment, and he felt guilt uh, about Sonny um, in his treatment of her. Um, and he, he talks about, you know, a recurring nightmare that he had uh, where he is sort of unable to uh, perform surgery um, on a girl who is uh, pregnant. So he has these sort of nightmarish or fantasies or, um, you know, his fears are enacted as kind of nightmares. And uh, he also has what could be seen as kind of almost like a death wish, like his guilt is so great uh, that sometimes he wishes he could uh, just take his own life or just die and be reborn uh, clean and pure uh, without all those haunting memories of his past and those feelings of guilt uh, that he has for what has happened. Uh, so in 277, he refers to swimming as uh, a moment when he sort of almost could uh, take his own life. Um, so uh, at the top of page 277, uh, I didn't tell him either of my other notions of my pa of the pastime that in fact some of us longtime swimmers often wish for ourselves that submerged majestic flight feel the near desire to open one's mouth and relax and let the waters rush in deep, hoping that something magical might happen. Once I will admit, during the very time I was thinking often of Sunny and her pregnancy, I attempted this, or let it occur, just a tiny inhalation, just a little taking in. And though my mind was clear and placid, every cell in my body at once objected, my limbs proudly jetting me out of the water and onto the slight surround of the pool, where I lay on my side, coughing violently. Did I wish to do away with myself? Did I truly wish to die? Or was I hoping for a tra transmogrification, complete and however strange, a wholly different heart and shell and mean that would deliver me over to a brand new life, fresh and hopeful and unfettered? So he sort of, uh, you know, at the time that her she was pregnant, he almost does this. Uh, he just, you know, inhales water, uh, trying to sort of drown himself, um, or at least, you know, attempting a kind of death or uh, imagining a kind of rebirth uh, where he could reemerge as somebody new, somebody uh, with a new life, fresh, unfettered. Um, so swallowing the water, uh, it seems to be almost, um, you know, a bit of a death wish. Uh, he feels guilty. He wants to escape his past. Um, swallowing the water might be a, a way of, uh, of either killing himself or, you know, it's sort of symbolic of a kind of uh, purification. 
And even if you think back to the lighting of the house, you know, he accidentally lit that fire within his fireplace and it kind of caught onto the rug. Even that sort of so-called accident does speak for a certain, you know, um, um, maybe that he did it, you know, not out of accident, but perhaps there was some ulterior motive. Uh, he, his inhaling of the smoke uh, could be seen as also a bit of a death wish or uh, a desire to sort of cleanse himself of his past. Um, so there is that aspect to his character as well. So it seems as if Doc had a, uh, you know, is racked with guilt uh, over his daughter and as we'll find out in the next chapter over uh, what happens to uh, Kote, the comfort woman. Uh, he's complicit in both of the, these traumatic events, um, his daughter's abortion and uh, what happens to Kate. Uh, so he's part of it. He's an integral player in what happens. Um, and if he had acted differently, uh, their lives would have been different uh, as well. Um, so we see that he carries a lot of guilt, um, what you, you could call survivor's guilt. Um, following these traumatic events and uh, he sees himself as somewhat uh, responsible for what happened to uh, these women in his life. Okay, so uh, that's all we need to talk about for uh, chapter 13.